Hello folks, you're very welcome to The Throne Show, Entertainment.ie's very own Game of Thrones review show. I'm Woo! here Woo! with... It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. Exciting. Yeah. I'm here with my esteemed colleague... Game of uh, Thrones! Fiona Flynn and the very subdued Owen Ronan. <laughs> uh, folks, um, the episode last night, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, I'm going to come to you first, Fiona. Um, what did you think of it? I really liked it in that it felt like... Game of Thrones was just giving us these like final precious moments with some of the characters we've loved so much. Absolutely. Like watching it felt like some kind of, I mean, is it the Hound called it like a wedding, but it was more like a wake, you know? Like <laughs> yeah. almost like an Irish wake as well, like seven people just sitting around a fire drinking and Talking kind of chatting. Shy. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think like every person's story kind of came full circle so that I think. The idea with that episode, I think, is to have us feel this or feel it again, the emotional attachment we had to so many characters. So when they're painfully ripped from us next week, which let's face it, half of them will be, I it's really gonna feel think they all the be, yeah. yeah, all the more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was just it's exactly as you said, where it's like we haven't seen some of these people in a long time and you get really built up and close to them and we're about to be completely ripped away from them. Yeah, yeah. Now, Owen, I'm going to ask you this question. So, like, one of the things that people always talk about with Game of Thrones is that some of the surprising deaths have occurred when people are in the middle of a story arc. The fact that a lot of these characters are completed their story arcs now, how do you think that would yeah. affect the show? Yeah, I mean, in one way, I thought it was cool because the amount of people that got, like, even, like, Jorah, Beric, the Hound, like, everybody kind of... It's almost like now that everybody's been wrapped up or reached their peak or their redemption or whatever it is, that again the level playing field is there where any of them could die. So it's not like someone's left unwrapped up and then, you know, they're guaranteed to make it through. It's kind of like, there's going to be some serious slaying now going on the next one. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, that's a very valid point. And, like, Fiona, what would you say was, say, maybe the most important scene in the show. I think the most important, God, there was a few of them that really stood out, but I think, I mean, the whole episode was called A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, so it really kind of has to be about, I think, that moment between um, Jamie and Brian. I think how it started off as well with her vouching firm, and like that was again their their relationship coming full circle. And I thought it was interesting how their scene of him being knighted was sort of juxtapositioned with like Aya and Gendry getting together, because it was sort of like for Aya and, I'm always saying, is it Gendry? Gendry. 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 Yeah. What was it? Gendry. Uh, Gendry. Um, I think for those two, that was always going to be the direction their relationship goes. Whereas with Jamie and Brian, it was all more about their mutual respect and how their relationship, and he talk, like took her as such a joke. Whereas at that point, he didn't, and he gave her the full respect that she deserved. Yeah. And I think the big smile on her face, like we've never seen her smile. I think we saw emotions yeah, from characters um, in this episode that we don't normally see. Uh, Brianne smiling would be one of them. And I also think uh, Zanza's reaction to Theon was hugely emotional because of their stories and how they've been through so much together. And like even when Zanza met John and when Zanza met Arya, she never really welled up. Yeah. Whereas this was like, oh my God, my fellow survivor. Like obviously they're both survivors of uh, Ramsay Bolton. Yeah, exactly. Um, so those for me were the most important scenes, I think, in terms of like character development. Yeah. And I liked as well with Jamie and Brienne, it wasn't like they... They both love each other, I think, but it's not necessarily a romantic storyline and it doesn't need to be, which is good because as well, when you see how like strong Arya is or whatever, the fact that that ended with romance, mm. it doesn't always need to, to yeah, fulfill that yeah. kind of like peak character arc. Yeah, and so I would imagine one of the bigger kind of talking points from the episode was the almost alluding to feminism across the board. You had Tormund talking about like, why can't women be knights? Mm. You had Arya kind of assuming quite a, uh, what's the word? <laughs> uh, Choose your words. <laughs> she was, mm, there's a phrase. She took control of the situation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Assertive. Yeah. Assertive. There you go. There you go. Assertive. Assertive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on that? <laughs> I thought, yeah, it was assertive. I liked her uh, assertiveness in All that right. situation. And I thought it was very much for a show you know, I think it was even interesting just first about like that for so many of those characters in season one, they would have spent their last night before battle just going to, you know, prostitutes, drinking wine, all the rest. So I think it was interesting to show how far they've come and that 
the sex scene between um, Gendry and Arya was sort of, it was so well earned and it was so hot in a kind of different way because it was like, <laughs> although I will say, I will say, I still was a bit like, don't take your clothes off, Arya, you're still a child. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I was like, it didn't, and I was kind of glad they showed what they did, but I was also, it was good to see that situation of like, you know, women aren't, as we kind of saw from season one, that like, women were there as like, you know, sex workers and they weren't really getting like their kind of full recognition. Yeah. Whereas this was a kind of a case of like, Arya had always said that, you know, she didn't necessarily, she didn't want to be a lady, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't want to have relationships with men. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like, it was kind of femininity on yeah, her terms. And Brian had said that she never wanted to be a knight, but that ultimately still didn't mean that that moment didn't mean something to her. So it was sort of interesting. And then of course, the conversation between uh, Zanza and Daenerys was a very good, yeah. two powerful women in a room kind of showing their worth and going up against each other. Yeah. So I don't know what you guys thought of that. Just, sorry, you work with. Well, well, firstly, I suppose with Arya, it was good that, well, no, what, what I was thinking there was that I was going to switch it up because I think Daenerys and Sansa, I was surprised that compared to the first episode, they kind of seemed to be still going on that kind of arc of like, Daenerys isn't that sound or might not actually be that good a queen. Um, so I'd be surprised. I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I just thought that was one of the biggest revelations where it's like they're continuing that conflict. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, do you mean as in terms of Daenerys ultimately not being the rightful? Yeah, yeah. like maybe it will end up falling to John, and they're kind of shown the seeds of, despite the fact that we've been following uh, yeah. the well, whole show. Yeah, well, a few predictions about how it will go to, but I'll get to that. Yeah. But I do think ultimately with Daenerys Targaryen, yeah, like the whole idea is how she's, I feel like she has been unraveling and that all her conversations with people, even in this episode, you know, like she was annoyed with Tyrion, but it was like, well, you trusted Cersei too, you know? Yeah, she keeps passing the blame for all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, and then even with, you know, she doesn't really have an answer to Sansa's question about the, well, I suppose she does have an answer to Sansa's question about the North and that she's like, the North's gonna still be mine, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I think ultimately it will be interesting to see how Daenerys reacts going forward to the news that she's not actually the rightful heir to the throne anymore. Yeah, exactly. They didn't even have a chance to kind of chat that out. Yeah. Is there a conversation to be had that throughout the series, Daenerys has been the figurehead for the strong female role and in the episode that's just, that we've just seen, it seems her position of strength has almost been weakened as a female character, yeah. whereas all the other female characters have increased. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you actually think about it, it you wouldn't expect Game of Thrones to be one of the more kind of feminist shows. Like you've got a lady on the Iron Throne being challenged by another woman. You've got a woman head of Winterfell. Yeah. Even they're like, they take time to still show Little Mormont. <laughs> like, yeah, she's such a badass. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've really taken the show and rightfully so, I suppose. Yeah, but I think George R. R. Martin had always said that, that, you know, at the beginning there was a lot of stuff about how it wasn't like a, a story for women, but I think he was like, it is and it will be. And you will see that. And I think that ultimately it should because so many of the women have gone through so much. Um, and it's funny because at the beginning we would have said Daenerys Targaryen had the more difficult journey. But now the likes of Sansa, Arya have had yeah. much more trickier journeys and have come out on top. So it's sort of like, well, actually, are they the stronger contenders? Are they the better yeah, leaders? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you've sort of been handed everything. Well, you fought for everything, but she's gotten very like big for her boots now and I think a lot of people see that yeah and maybe that's her right I don't know do you know what yeah. I mean like um I suppose all of it's just building up for the rug to be pulled out of us yeah like next week or whatever yeah and the obviously the the revelation that she's after learning about John revealing his true yes. image to her and her immediate reaction not being about oh good my brother's not a rapist that kind of stuff where she was immediately thinking like I've oh, slept with my nephew. Nobody's bringing this that. up. Was Nobody's that, that, bringing up the incest. Away. Nobody's talking about the incest. No one's like, what it's about, so strange. What about the incest? Feel what about the incest? <laughs> <laughs> we need answers. That's like a claim to the Iron Throne. Yes, 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 yes. And you're anti your nephew. We still haven't been told if it's grand or not. Yeah, it's okay. But I think either way, like, the, it's interesting to see that kind of power struggle that will be there. And also I thought it was um, interesting that I mean, I know that moment was interrupted by like that klaxon going off about the army of the dead arriving, but she did say there was still a moment lingering where she said to him, you're, you've got a claim to the Iron Throne. And mm. he didn't jump in and say, oh, but that's yours, sweetheart. You know, you, you, yeah, that was always Yeah, the whole thing was that he didn't care. He but... didn't actually stop to jump in. So I think it's like, oh, does he actually want the Iron Throne? 
Maybe it's just that they're withholding that conflict for either during the battle or right at the end or yeah, giving us yeah. something for the last few yeah. episodes. There's, there's a part of me, and I suppose I was looking at it from a continuity kind of thing, that yeah. like they were down there, she asked them that, and then the horn went off. And then the next scene was them coming out of the crypts. I was like, the door wasn't four feet away. I was like, they can't have just walked in silence. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was like, boy. I, just, I just asked you, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, we better That's go so check true. this out. Like, no, but, but John, 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 yeah. no, he's just like, no, end scene, end scene, end scene. <laughs> did you notice uh, Ghost in the background as well? I did. Yes, when they we'll were up in the back throw a picture up there, yeah, yeah exactly. Again, I see that as, I think it's, that was just, all right, fans, you've been asking for it, here you go, that'll keep you happy. Yeah. I mean, like, I thought it was fan service. I'm not a fan of fan service. Not in a fan of fan shows. service. No, As you've told us, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you were talking there a while ago about, like, all the characters have come full circle and we're getting our chance to say goodbye. And I'm like, I feel like we, like, and you can if say, too we've been watching or... it all these years, we deserve this goodbye. And it's like, I feel like we deserve, like, consistency in the thing where people that's are killed off before their time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what made Game of Thrones Game of Thrones. And I think they're getting a little bit schmaltzy. However, that's a really I hope good I point. keep my words this time next week. Yeah, maybe with the last season, like, it's, for all we can rave and discuss about, the first two episodes of the final season are quite chatty, like, rat tying up loose ends. I mean, obviously it was going to be, but... Yeah, you're right. I suppose a big part of the appeal of seasons past is the ruthlessness and the lack of time for sentimentality or whatever. So. But then, I mean, from reviewing the series over the last few years, I will say that this always happens, that everyone goes, there's episodes of Game of Thrones where nothing happens. People are just chatting, you know, and everyone's like, oh, where's that? Where's the big shocks? Where, like, yeah. I guarantee you by the end of this season, there's going to be so many shocks and so many things that we weren't expecting that we'll be like, oh, remember the first two episodes where they all just sat around chatting? Yeah. And I think yeah. people would be annoyed as much as, I don't think it's fan service so much as people would be more pissed off at the end of it if they were like, well, why, why did they have that whole thing with Aya and Gendry? And why did they have this whole thing with like, so, so that it was sort of like so many characters' storylines had developed that like, it was sort of all assumed for nothing that they had shown us all these pivotal scenes yeah, between exactly. uh, characters interacting. So I think that was the point of this episode was just sort of be like, yes, we are going to kill everyone off, but also we do recognize the journey you've been on with these characters. Yeah, dead right. Um, but I do know what you mean is in like, now when a lot of them die next week, we're not going to be like, how could they rip this person from us? We'll be like, you know, RIP, we said our goodbyes to you. Yeah. Um, but I do think that like as much as the next episode, we feel like we know what the battle plan is, We've said goodbye to all the characters, basically, but I still think they've got a lot of surprises up yeah. their sleeve for Winterfell, which is ah. Battle of Winterfell, as they're calling it. Um, I don't think things are going to go to plan um, as much as they think. Absolutely. We have had a look at the teaser, and there's a strange moment at the end between Daenerys and Jon where she says to him, the dead are already here. And I kind of feel like I'm wondering, is that going to be, will Daenerys just want to get the hell out of Dodge? Like, Daenerys, her... My main thing has always been the Iron Throne. So is she going to make the selfish decision to, to leave them, to bail? Yeah. I don't know, maybe that's not going to happen. Is that your but prediction? Are you predicting my this? Prediction, my prediction My prediction. for the whole thing. Are you ready for it? No, no, um, no, I'm just talking about the next episode. No, I want to give you my full prediction. Um, so my prediction for the next episode will be, John's never going to leave that battle. He will die in that battle. But I think if anyone was going to leave that battle on their dragon... Do you metaphorically die or literally die? Would or will? He would. <laughs> He would die in that battle. He like would, he would yeah. die protecting Winterfell. <laughs> would Daenerys die protecting Winterfell? No, probably not. So I think her moment of saying the dead are already here is a moment of saying we need to leave. Like it's already yeah. it's already destroyed. We need to get to safe harbor and plan another attack from there. Whereas John will never actually leave Winterfell. Yes, yeah. So I think that could be a way of ensuring Daenerys' survival going into the next few episodes is that she just leaves. Yeah. And I think John will stay but ultimately hold it against her for leaving. And that that will be sort of their kind of relationship yeah. done with, but a very much more um, tricky Maybe relationship like going forward. Maybe like pitch those two against each other. Yeah. For the final few episodes. Yeah. And Owen, Ooh. your thoughts? How is it going to go? My prediction is much less meta, but I think that uh, a big headless Skeletor Ned Stark is going to come out of the crypt. <laughs> the <laughs> crypt! Like, can we talk about the crypts? They're very safe. You were talking about them. They're so safe. Six times in the episode. We don't talk about them. They're so they safe. Were like, They're so yeah. safe. Make sure you get down to the crypts if you need to or whatever. It's like, yeah. those crypts are going to feckin' 
don't go to the graveyard underground to. <laughs> it's、oh, like、where、whatever. the dead people live. Yeah.、Oh. With an army of the dead on the way. Like, how、it's、is that possible? It's going to be a part of it. Maybe well, Arya will have to fire. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to put this to you now. So, this was、uh, a theory. Again, there are so many theories out there, but there's a theory that the whole thing of Brandon Stark back in the day built the wall. And、yes. he put the magic spell on it that would keep the Night King away. Okay. He also built Winterfell, and there's the whole thing about like there must always be a Stark in Winterfell, and obviously, like, th- it, you'd be wondering, is there some sort of shenanigans going on there? And in addition to that, you could say Osher Bran, the young fella in the wheelchair, Bran, he broke the curse on the wall because he was marked by the Night King. He went through the wall, so、okay. the Night King was able to attack it. But he's never been down to the crypts. And when they said, "We'll put you down in the crypts," he was like, "No,、nah, I'll actually go to the tree." Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Do, yeah. Do you think there's something there? Yeah. I just wonder if we'll see one on one. I saw in the teaser it looked like John was in a kind of snowy place that wasn't out on the field. So maybe it ends up with a kind of big fight in front of the what heart tree or whatever. Do you think they'll win? Who's they? Do will the army of the living? Because I'm wondering, so it's got the two options: the army of the living versus the army of the dead, the Night King. Will they wrap up the Night King story after episode three? So the main focus will be back to the politics and the Iron Throne, or will there be some kind of like the Night King will kind of run off away with his frozen、yeah. dragon, being like, "Oh no!" And then there'll be a further battle with the Night、yeah. King later on. Do you know like, what? With Cersei and King's Landing. I couldn't possibly、Landing. say. <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. I don't What do you not、so. think? I think it would just be the the biggest slap in the face that for so many years it's been the big threat is this lad. Yeah. And yeah. then three episodes before、yeah. it's like, oh no, he's not. Someone else is not not having it, not、yeah. playing it. I don't know. We we spend so long talking about how how unpredictable the show is. So just enjoy it. So they're not. So they'll lose the battle at Winterfell. I know. Just to get. <laughs> I, thanks for showing up, Bo. Thanks for showing up. I don't know. Jesus. I'm sorry to watch today. None of us know. That's what we're talking about. I want, I want three names from each of you of people who are going to survive the battle with you. Ah, so much easier to do, die.、Mm. Uh, the hound will survive because we deserve Clegg and Bol. Yes. You do another one. John and Daenerys. I'm just taking two. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Do you want? No, I want three each. Oh. You can pick the same ones, like. Uh, hound. Sansa.、Mm. We'll survive. You're going John, Danny, and Sansa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Arya might not then. Jesus. John, John Daenerys as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go against the foreshadowing, and I'll probably be wrong. And I'm going to say Davos is going to survive. I'm going to say、yeah. Grey Worm is going to survive. And I'm going to say Jorah is going to survive because they've all been like those are the three. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Grey Worm just wants to go. Well, like they're all they're, like they're all yeah they're like we're going on holidays after over. this. We're yeah. Going yeah. Holidays. Yeah. So I'm I'm、right. gonna go against that, and I'm gonna say they're gonna surprise us all in those three. Let's see. But let's and who is definitely then gonna die? Torment. I think Jamie, he's done. Jamie Lannister. I think he he's got he's got at least one more interaction with Cersei. I think. You would think, but then obviously I know what you mean. I kind of agree, but then I'm like, has it always been Tyrion and Cersei? Is that the ultimate showdown? As opposed to Jamie and Cersei, like he's walked out and her, he's left her. Was that the end of their story? He's he's done with her. What more could be had from an interaction between them? Whereas、mm. Tyrion and Cersei, you know, Tyrion did say in the room, like, well, if I survive it, you know, just for the shock, I would give her to rock back up and King's yeah, Landing, yeah. you know, kill her himself. But so, and I think so. Jamie's again, it's with the character arcs and things coming full circle. Jamie got to redeem himself in terms of、um, killing Aerys Targaryen, in terms of what he did to the Stark family. And what he did to well, Bran is part of the Stark family.、Yeah. So I think if he was to die by、um, Brienne's side, then it would be a fitting end to a great character. I think we will see the end of him. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. No, we want to know now. Thanks so much, everyone, <laughs> for watching the Throne Show here on Entertainment.ie. Thanks very much to Fiona Flynn and Owen Ronan for joining us. Owen, you can relax now. <laughs> and、uh, thanks very much for Mike helping us out behind the camera. And、uh, we'll see you all next week. Woo! Get a truck!